Today's show feels different. Today's show feels different, at least to me, because I'm going to be reviewing a Class D amplifier. And that is something I don't usually do. <laughs> I, it's not that I don't like the sound of Class D amplifiers. They can sound OK. But to be blunt about it, they, most of them sound kind of boring. You know, there's inoffensive. Yeah. I want more than that. I like amplifiers that have some personality, that make me sit up straighter in the chair when I'm listening. And this one, the Belcanto C6i Integrated, absolutely does that. Yeah, I kept digging this amplifier. I listened to it a lot longer than I usually do because I kept thinking, this is a Class D amplifier? <laughs> and yes, in fact, it is a Class D amplifier. I also like that it's small. It's less than nine inches wide, so it's pretty darn compact. It doesn't fit the usual you know, wide stance shape of most amplifiers. You could put it, easily fit it on a desktop or on a shelf, no problem. And being a Class D design, it runs barely warm to the touch, so you don't have to worry about heat and all that stuff. Let's take a look at the back panel to check out the connectivity suite. There is a moving magnet input, pre-amplifier outputs that you could also use to drive a subwoofer, and I did over the course of this review, and one set, just one set of analog RCA inputs, well, in addition to the phono input. The digital options are a wee bit more generous. There's two optical inputs, one coax, and USB. The internal DAC handles DSD 128 and PCM up to uh, 192 24 bit. Oh, I don't want to neglect the binding posts. Those are WBT, very high quality binding posts. Oh, and the front panel hosts a very easy to read display um, and a silky smooth feeling volume control. Knob feel is exceptionally good. One of the best I've felt this year. Now, there's a menu system <laughs> that you use that volume control, which also handles input selection. But it, beyond that, when you have to go into the menus, which are very limited, but they're very, uh, I don't know, 1990 or 1998 or something, but they're very old school menu, kind of clunky, not so easy to navigate, but you don't really use it that much. So it's not that big a deal. Oh, and the remote control, yeah, I get another cheesy feeling plastic remote, but yes, it does get the job done. The warranty runs to two years and the price is $3,195. The front panel also hosts a 6.3 millimeter headphone jack. And I will tell you right up front, I found the headphone sound over this integrated amp very, very good, very impressive. I should have mentioned this sooner, but yes, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in the show. Now, as for the speakers, I used a few. I used the Kef LS50, the Pure Audio Project Duet 15, and also the Magnapan LRS Plus Planner Magnetic Panel speakers, because I wanted to use a different types of speakers to get a feeling of what was going on with the C6i. So as for the music selections, I started with this one on the Kef LS50, and it was Dick Hyman playing the music of Bix, Bix Beiderbeck. I think that's how you say his name. But anyway, it's a solo piano recording. And the thing that I was getting right away was the shading, the dynamic shading of Dick Hyman's touch on the keys. And his left hand had plenty of weight. Now this is a fairly small speaker with a five and a quarter inch concentric driver. So it's not gonna be a bass powerhouse, but I felt that the tonal balance had plenty of weight in scale, considering I was using it with a very small set of speakers. To pick it up a notch, I played this one, Miles Davis, Nefertiti. Now, this record is one of my absolute favorites. It's definitely in the top three for Miles and me. And it feels like, on a great system like this one, it feels like I'm driving a fast car. Tony Williams drumming is just such a powerhouse. He's not like a rock drum, he's not that kind of powerhouse, but just his speed and his clarity and his shading and all of that, it's just incredible. And of course, Miles Horn is just on fire. And the charts on this record, the arrangements are just so intricate and there's layers and space and depth and the imaging focus, which is the strength of the LS50, is absolutely amazing. And yeah, I'm, I'm really digging it because I said, this isn't what I usually get with Class D. Class D can sound fine, but just kind of, I don't know, it just sucks the life out of music 
most of the time for me, just speaking for me as, as myself and as a reviewer, I just get bored with Class D, but not this time. Continuing, I wanted to swap out the speakers for the MagnaPan LRS Plus planar magnetic panels. Now these speakers, first of all, are incredibly power hungry speakers. They just need current, they need power to really do what they do. The sound was good, very transparent, very clear, but a tad mm, lightweight. So yes, I called up the RHEL T0 subwoofer, this tiny little subwoofer that I know works really well with the Maggie's. I pop that in using the, the preamplifier outputs driving the RHEL, and that did the trick. Super easy to get a blend, and now the speaker sound was transformed. That combination of the T0 and the LRS Plus is, when you get it just right, as it worked in this case, it's just magical. The speakers sound bigger, they sound more dynamic, the low end the leanness goes away. Now this isn't a super powerful sub, but that's one of the reasons why it works so well with this speaker. I just want to be clear about this. Adding the subwoofer doesn't transform the LRS Plus into a rock speaker. You know, it's not a kick-ass speaker now that it has a sub. <laughs> the sub is there to smooth out the tonal balance of the speaker, which it does very, very well. And yeah, it feels a touch more dynamic and a bit bigger sounding as a speaker, but it's still not going to do that. And that has nothing to do with what the C6i is contributing to the sound. It's just the inherent limitations of the speaker. The speaker is all about transparency, and that's why I stuck it in here, because I wanted to see basically how transparent and pure and clear the C6i was, and it was definitely doing the job. When it came time to swap out the LRS, I wanted to go for something bigger. Yeah, so at this point, it was the Pure Audio Project Duet 15. Now this speaker has, as the name implies, a 15 inch woofer, and it's an open baffle speaker. And when I hooked up the C6i, the thing that grabbed me right away was just how fast the bass was, how grippy it was, how the amplifier really took charge of that woofer and had it under its control. Yeah, the speed of the bass, the impact of the bass, the, just the power delivery of this combination, C6i, Duet 15, was very, very impressive. And I was playing Radiohead Amnesiac and playing it really loud and just filling the room and having a blast. So yeah, 125 watts channel with a fairly high sensitivity speaker like this, yeah, it can move some air. So to continue, I wanted to compare the C6i with a class AB amp, namely the Electro Compagnette ECI80D integrated amp I just reviewed. So it was here, I was just about to send it back. I thought, no, let me slot it in and do this comparison because it seems like a, a fair comparison. And for the music I was playing, it was this Stevie Ray Vaughan album. And I was using this track, Chitlins, and it has this great feel, like a late night, everybody's gone home feel, and the band is just stretching out, and it's really good feel to the music. The catch is, the recording itself is a bit too squashed, too, com too compressed, and on the bright and in-your-face side. And the ECI 80D was doing a great job in revealing all the flaws of this recording. And when I switched to, back to the C6i, it kind of scaled that back. It was softer enough just to take just the um, right amount of edge off. It also filled out the bottom end more than the Electro Compagnette. The Electro Compagnette, by comparison, was a tad lean in the low end. Spatially, they were both really good. Uh, but I gotta say, I have to point this out, there's something about the sound of the C6i just lines things up so clearly. The soundstage focus and detail, especially that center in image, was really locked in. So I was digging it. So between these two amps, I like both, but if anything, I would give the nod to the C6i because that flavor of just sweetening it just the right amount went down really, really well for me. Next, I wanted to play a recording that sounded really good with both amplifiers. And I chose this one, Frank Zappa Orchestral Favorites. So no, it's not a rock album. <laughs> it's more of a, a large ensemble. Because Frank had that side to him, right? And I gotta say that the uh, Electro Compagnette was more transparent, more 3D, just 
yeah, gave me more of that. But there was something about the way the C6i's low end just had more drive to it. It felt like a, a large ensemble. Both of the, if, if I could have something in between the two, maybe that would be perfect. But that wasn't on the cards for today. But anyway, they both did a great job. The electric company yet wins on transparency and inner detail and clarity. But it's not like the C6i was so far behind but it had the extra appeal of having more solidity to the sound. And the next thing on my agenda was to check out two things at once, the phono preamp, and I used my Technics SL1200G turntable with a Grado Platinum 3 high output cartridge. It's a moving iron, very similar to, to moving magnet in the way it sounds and works. So anyway, that was a good match. And to listen, I was using my Sennheiser Mastrop 5.8X uh, headphones, which are the, the Mastrop version of the Sennheiser HD 580, which I know and love. But anyway, I was using the Mastrop version. Really, I was getting great sound. I was impressed how quiet, because I'm listening over headphones, how quiet the built-in moving magnet section was, how dynamic it was, and how much balls it had. I mean, it really had some, <laughs> could communicate power extremely well. And it was big and spacious. So I was, yeah, I was really impressed with both the photo section and the built-in headphone amplifier. For an integrated amp of this price, which is not uh, free, as my friend Herb Riker would say, $3,195. It's a serious high-end component, and I was getting some serious high-end sound quality. So, okay, this is the good part. So, Steve, what do you really think of the C6i integrated amplifier? Well, I am, well, relieved <laughs> that I can finally show some genuine enthusiasm for a Class D amplifier and one that's a nice size, it's easy to use, it sounds great, doesn't get hot. <laughs> and it just, it took charge of the speakers, especially the uh, Pure Audio Project, but it did a great job with the KEF LS50. Imaging, I don't think I stress this enough, the imaging was really so spot on. Center image focus was spectacular. The bottom end had real power and push to it. Yeah, I'm into it. And, and also that the headphone sound was really good. Moving magnet phono section was, because a lot of times inter, uh, integrated amp phono sections are kind of iffy for me. This one definitely was pulling its weight. Definitely, you don't need to get a better phono preamp with this one. So yeah, it was all good. It was all good. So I hope to do more Bel Canto, maybe do one of their separate power amps in 2023. We'll, we'll see how this all shakes out. And now, speaking of shaking out, it's now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. This picture comes to us from Dennis. He lives in Quebec City, Canada. His speakers are ATC SCM11s and then he has a pair of RHEL T5i subwoofers. His integrated amp is a Hegel H360. Turntable, clear audio concept, LE wood with a satisfy Carden Carbon tone arm. Cartridge, Denon 103MC, that's a moving coil. Phono preamp is a Musical Fidelity M6X vinyl. CD transport is a Roxanne Candy KC1. The DAC is a Denifreps Pontus II. For streaming, there's a Blue Sound Node 2i. Thanks for that great shot, Dennis. Okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. Thank you for watching. Absolutely. I love that I can communicate with people all over the world on my YouTube channel. I have a new camera, by the way. I don't know if this looks any different, any sharper or clearer, but I, th I think it does. I think it was a worthwhile upgrade. Anyway, so there's that. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, and you must like it at least a little bit, you've watched this far into this video, please consider joining my Patreon. To do so is really easy, and Patreon accepts payment in dollars, pounds, and euros. If you join at the top levels, you and I will have a conversation every month. And I've said this before, I so enjoy having these conversations. It's so great to have one-on-one -on -one meetings, so to speak, over the phone with people all over the world talking about hi-fi. 
it's, it's a blast. So as for my podcast, I'm still trying to figure out how to move forward with the podcast. But there's 32 episodes already up there. Check them out. The link to the podcast is in the bio. But you can check it out, the Audiophiliac Podcast on Spotify and on Apple uh, Podcasts and all the usual places. It's all there for you. And if you just like what I'm doing here on the channel and just like certain episodes, please hit the like button. It means a lot. And also consider subscribing if you have yet to do so. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.